Hello there, welcome to the studio for this live watercolour demonstration here from beautiful England, beautiful Derbyshire. And um, looking forward to this one, it's going to be something uh, I've not done for a while, so a live stream here on the YouTube channel. So um, let's just give it a few moments while people come along and join us live. Now, Joining us at the minute live, we have a hello to Angela Guest, Joseph Collins, Rosemary Baldock, Gillian is with us, Betsy Ensley, Carol Air um, is with us as well, Andrew, Andrea Wegram, Philip, hello to you, uh, hi to Diane Benson, uh, Norma is with us, Pat as well, so thank you for tuning in. If you want a really big shout out when you want to support the channel, there's a few things you can do. You can like the video, you can like the video, we've got about 60 people live at the minute, if you want to give us a thumbs up, you can do that. Like the video, that makes a big difference. It helps this channel grow. Uh, we've currently got 80,000 80, subscribers. Um, we need to get more, so hit like. We've got 12 likes and 60 people watching. Also, you can subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel. Please do hit that subscribe button and, of course, the notification bell. And if you really, really want to support the channel, of course, you can use the super chat to drop a donation across. Um, hi to uh, hi to Kathy. Kathy's with us as well, and uh, Jay has just joined us from Ireland as well. So hello to you. But if you want to support the channel, you can drop a donation in, and it's called the super chat. It's the little sort of dollar symbol at the bottom of the chat there, and I'll give you an extra big special shout out if you do that. Now, we are going to paint a bit of a woodland here today, and it's going to be a watercolour tutorial slash watercolour demo, so pretty quickly painted. We're going to speed through this thing at a quick pace. Joseph Collins, what can I say? Thank you so much, Joseph. You have sent a $5 donation. Massively appreciated. I'll send you a virtual kiss. There you go. Thank you for that. Do you want a virtual kiss? We can send you one as well. Um, it's hot and sticky in Norfolk, says... Uh, says Thomas, but Matthew Palmer's demos are cool. Well, it's red hot in the studio, it's 25 degrees here, 22 degrees. We've got lights on, it's baking red hot, but we all have, we're gonna enjoy this. We're going to enjoy this one. So, let's kind of go through the materials, what we're gonna be using. What we've got here is a sheet of watercolor paper. Size is irrelevant, apparently. We've got a sheet of quarter imperial watercolour paper. This particular size is 11 inch by 15. A little bit of a tilt on the board. You can always drop some masking tape under the top as well to help that kind of slope. It always does make quite a difference if you do that. Also uh, over here we've got the palette of pretty much all my colours, all 14 Matthew Palmer colours. For those people that don't know I've got my own range of paints. Uh, they're called natural watercolours. Thank you Joseph, you sent one back, bless you. Um, we have the uh, natural greens here which are designed to replicate nature but i'll i'll throw them on the floor i'll kind of go through the colors as we progress through the picture okay i think that's the best policy here so as we as we go through the demo i'm just going to grab that tube of great paper I've just thrown on the floor talk amongst yourselves there's a bit of natural gray there brushes brushes we have we have um, I'm lucky that I've got my own products. Well, here I've got a brush called Matthew Palmer Super Point Large, and I've got a large, medium, and small one of those. They're kind of the like the core brushes. They're a size 20, 10, 6 when I use those. Um, and then I've got some tree and texture brushes. I'm going to get a bit of a woodland themed watercolour here. That's kind of what I want to be working on. Hi to Gail. Gail's joined us, so is Les. Um, 70 people are with us now. 28 likes, let's get some more likes. We can do more likes, I'm pretty sure we can. Um, now, I'm not gonna do any sketching on this particular page. I'm just gonna go straight in and just gonna work on the page and create something from nothing, hopefully. Create something from nothing. If you like any of the products that we're using today, I've popped links in the description if I can access them all. But behind me is my website um, have a look on it folks if you're new to the channel do make sure you get yourself onto the website have a look there's loads of cool stuff on there um, you can simply click on the art shop page and you can have a look at all the stuff that um, we do including the live virtual watercolor workshops which we'll talk a little bit more about later on 
I think it's probably time that we get um, started. So if we get over to the picture here, we've got a piece of masking tape. I want to sort of protect the back from the front on this one. I don't know exactly what we're going to be painting until we do it because it's live. It's all part of the fun. So a strip of masking tape long enough to go across the picture. Remove the stickiness. Isn't it me or is it moist? Remove, put some moisture on your tape. And that's going to go about a third of the way up. We're going to sort of do that. We're going to drop it down a bit and we're going to bring it back up a little bit. So it's going to droop down a bit and then it's going to sweep back up a little bit on that side. And hopefully there's enough to go all the way across from one side to other. Yes, it's meant to be a bit crooked. It's meant to be a bit crooked, like me. Uh, we're going to get the big brush here. Plenty of water. This is a 20 brush. I'm working at a demo speed here. Now, if you want more relaxed paint along style, that's where you want to be taking part in one of my live workshops. All the information is in the description below about those. In fact, there's one happening this um, weekend, actually. Um, Here's the information about it. It's Sunday the 27th of August. We're going to be painting an old Smuggler's Inn by the Sea in watercolours. It's going to be a belter, an absolute belter of a workshop. You'll create a painting from scratch with me in real time. If you can't be there on Sunday at 10 a.m., don't worry, because look, you can watch it live or at any time. Yours to keep forever. Have a look. Link in the description. So I'm wetting the page here a couple of times. It's pretty warm today. It's going to dry pretty quick. This is like watching paint dry, is it not? But you need this starting point. A bit of a woodland feel, I think I want to go for here. So, decent chunk of water. Let's get some nice kind of summery colours into this one. That's the plan of action here, folks. We're going to get lots of summery colours into this one. That's what I'd like to do anyway. I'd like to make this thing nice and bright, if we can. Um, so let's just make sure that we're okay with colours and then we're going to jump over to the palette and my first thing that I want to do is I want to pop some bright yellow in. Now the yellow actually is natural yellow light. It's a lovely primary colour. Take some of that, stick it on this clean palette. This was the original sample that came prototype with my palette, Matthew Palmer is a clean palette. And as you can probably see, it's a little bit uh, battered now. We, it's probably about 15 years old. What we're going to do here is we're going to drop some yellows into this big brush. A nice vibrant yellow. Now that's quite difficult to see. It'll improve with age, like me. And we'll, we'll bring that in. So a summery evening atmosphere maybe with the yellow. So I'm twisting the brush in. Beautiful. Clean the brush really well at that stage. Um, make sure we take away all of that yellow as much as we can on some kitchen paper. And then we'll grab some blue. You can't beat a bit of blue on a, a Thursday afternoon. Bit of blue for dads, as Peter Kay says. Well, it's blue. There's your blue. There's your blue. Bit of blue. Bit of blue. And we'll bring that in at the top. Now, obviously, when blue and yellow meet, it goes green. We can live with that, can't we? Why can we live with that? Because we're doing a woodland and we want green. So encourage these colours to mix on the paper. Don't be afraid to get the yellows mixing with the blues because it wants to be a bit of a woodland, you see. So that mixture of colours is going to be quite nice. So all this is wet into wet, all mixing together. Beautiful. Got a bit excited then. You can smell it. You can smell the excitement. Now, changing brushes, changing brushes. Pop that one to one side, that's the big brush. Stick that over there. And then what we're going to do here is use a tree and texture brush. We've got an extra large tree and texture brush here. You can see it there. All these are available on the website. You've got the large, the most popular one is the large one. You've got the medium and somewhere you've got the small. You can get the whole set. Well, this one, the extra large one is beautiful, beautiful for doing these. I'm going to give it a good old clean in that water. It's beautiful. Beautiful. A bit of water. Is it me? We're going to take some light green, natural green light. Look at that. 
super, super. What we're going to do here, get a bit closer and we can zoom in. With all the mod comms here, electricity and everything. I'm going to pop this in, beautiful light green. With every tap of the brush, the paint is still damp. Paper still damp, should I say, which work, really works well. And we'll stipple all this in, we'll bring it down into the middle, working across. Let your paint spread. So this is this is natural green light, colours designed for replication of nature. Simple logic. When I was very fortunate that I got to develop a range of colours many, many years ago, um, the greens were a no-brainer because it's like, well, everybody struggles to make green. Well, I've got the chance to do it, you know, to have ready-made versions. And look how nice those colours are already. We've got that vibrancy. That's the light colour. Water colours you go light to dark, so now it's starting to go darker over to the palette. We've got a darker green just called natural green. So I'm mixing that within the other one. So it makes like a mid green. Again, working around those. Look at that already, beautiful. Being more aggressive at the bottom, keep it clean. And then we'll go up towards the top. So you're starting to get that mixture of colours here for the foliage. More of the same. It's been a while since I've used this brush, um, <clears throat> on a demo at least, and I, it's a pleasure to do it because it's basically, you can see that with every bristle, there's like a individual separate leaf as the bristles separate. Remember this is the extra large one. There's a full set of these colours. Uh, brushes, small right up to the one I'm using here. So lovely colours coming through. Now I am going to go darker, but it's still damp. A sign of good paper is the fact that it's still workable. Let's go darker again. So this is just that natural green. I mean, the paint is really quite thick here. I'm gonna get real, real dark in these corners here, look. Both sides. I'm gonna change the brush in a minute to one of the smaller tree brushes, but this is working lovely. Look at these individual leaf that we're creating, beautiful. It's a pleasure to use this brush. There we go. As it starts to dry, that's a great time to do this. I'm going to pull that brush away actually um, for the minute and I'm going to pick up this one which is just a large one. So this is working down a step here, clean brush on the tissue. This is just a large one. Again, using this colour here. But I'm going to introduce some grey into it now. I'm mixing it with some natural grey, the perfect shadow colour. You can see the difference in the brushes size. Quite, quite striking when you look at it like that, isn't it, you know? Beautiful, right. Darkness is the key. We need darkness. We're starting to get dark, but we need more darkness, don't we? We need more darkness here. Very important that we do get darker, especially with that gray in these bottom corners here. And bring it across. Look at that juicy, strong colour. These brushes, this particular one, was one of the first ones I designed. Uh, late 90s was when these brushes first sort of appeared. Smaller trees in the middle. So it almost disappears into a mist. Lovely effect. You can almost put pure grey in these corners. It wouldn't go amiss because it will all soften in. It will all blend in in a minute. Stay with me. Anticipation is off the fun. We'll come back a bit with the camera here so you can see a little a little bit more of what we're trying to achieve here but looking nice, looking nice even at this early stage. So we've got 90 people watching, 40 likes. Come on, give us a like. Give us a like. We've earned it. Come on. We've earned it. Get a few more little bits of darkness in. 
I'm going to blend all this in in a second. And put some trees in, put some branches in. Lovely striking colour. Clean that brush really, really well. And then I'm going to stipple it in some kitchen paper so it's damp. I'm going to, we're going to, and we're going to tap over the tops of some of these. Create some misty early morning, late evening vibes to this woodland. But you can see I'm working over the top of all of this and it's blending it all in. I'll give it a tilt so you can see better the lights reflecting at the stage. But it blends it all in, it softens it all in and you've created a massive foliage, quite a daunting thing to do, especially in watercolours. Using a plastic card, this is a hotel key card from a famous, we can't mention that name because we'll get we'll get copyright striked, but you know what it is, don't you? I'm going to use this to add some branches to the tree. And this is the demo, so we're doing it pretty quickly. I'm going to scrape off, I mean this is it's just a satisfying thing to do. If you've had a hard day, scrape off some branches. Have a good scrape of your branches, you'll love it. Chills you out. Better than a beer. Now I can go more detailed with these, if you don't wish. But it depends how much of a detail fan you are. It depends what level of painting you're doing. I mean, I'm doing this, aiming this, I suppose, at beginners, I guess, in a way. Look how nice it is to do these branches. We've all done this before. If you've followed me before, you've seen me do this a thousand times, but it's just, it's quite a rewarding thing to do. Little almost light pressure. If you want to get a bit more refined, you've got yourself a plastic card here, but then you could go down the palette knife road, which gives you a lot more precision, a lot more detail. So you can see here, we're going a lot more detail. I'm surprised I've still got time to work on this because the heat in the studio, or is it just me that's going through the male menopause? I'm starting to grow breasts. <laughs> I'm joking. I shouldn't joke about it, should I really? It's a problem. You can, uh, if you've got any complaints, please put it in writing. Stamps dressed envelope to Matthew Palmer, Derbyshire, and see if it gets here. There we go. So, I mean, look at that. Isn't that good? I'm loving this. Angela Guest, thank you so much. You have rapidly changed the subject there by donating five of your finest English pounds. Angela Guest, thank you so much for that. Um, a big shout out to you, Angela. It's appreciated. It all keeps the lights on, it keeps the paint flowing, and it makes me do more of these little demos for you. It's been a while since I've done a YouTube demo, I'll be honest with you. You know, life's been busy. And also, Betsy. Betsy Emsley, thank you so much. You're a regular at the workshops and various things, aren't you? So thank you for your support, your continued support. It does mean a lot, and thank you for the $4.99 Super Chat donation as well. It's keeping the lights on here in the studio. Well, what an effect. What a beautiful effect. We've got, we've kind of got a woodland here. I've been enjoying this so far, though, folks. So thank you to Joseph Collins, Betsy and the Angela Guest for your Super Chat donation. Um, yeah, it's just a little sort of dollar symbol at the bottom of the um, chat, if you can see the chat, that is, on your screen. Lovely jubbly. Now that wants a little bit of time to dry, but what we can do is we can remove the masking tape here. We can give it a little bit of a peel. Nice and steady, take your time now. Oh, see, it starts to rip a little bit, so you need to be a bit careful here. So we'll we'll go the other way. We'll go the other way. Nice and steady. If it rips, go the other way and just take it off. 
it'll just get lost in the picture. Don't worry about things like that happening, but that's quite a good uh, background. It's a good uh, sort of starting point there. Happy with what we've got so far, which is nice. We've got some nice depth, some nice darkness coming through. Now in the foreground, I want to grab a pencil here and do a little bit of sketching. So I want to get a little hint of a waterfall coming in. I've got a 2B pencil here and do a little bit of sketching down. So I, I kind of feel like we have a bit of a stream that's sort of coming around here. Got some little mounds on the side here. So I'm sketching these mounds in. But I'm kind of adding a bit of a zigzag, if you like. And the foreground, one to add a bit of a waterfall to it. Just kind of sneaking over. Imagine this is going to be the waterfall here. Now, I know you can't see it too well. And then we'll come down here. Get the opposite side of the waterfall then. So imagine this is where the water is cascading down. And this rocky edge coming up into the picture. So let me try and show you what I've done there. So hopefully you can see that. Not the most clearest of things to see as pencil on a video, but it's there. And that's going to give us a little, little stream and some waterfalls. Lots of detail to come on this. Do stick with us, folks, throughout this. I'm just waiting for that to dry a little bit, if I'm honest. I've got a heat gun that I could use. I want to add a bit more time to this. I think a bit of a footpath might be nice there later on as well. So that's the sketch. I'll try and make the pencil a bit darker so you can see it. Yeah, I think that will work quite nice, that nice little bit of a little bit of a sketch there. Now, while that is having a moment, it's having a moment to dry, let me just um it's almost dry. We've also got some amazing transparent trees. That's the future of painting. Um green screens are wonderful things when they work. If you like my style of painting, if you've been following me on the channel for a while, um, do have a look on the website, it's behind me here. So have a look on all the wswatercolor.tv because what you've got on there is a great... We're celebrating 15 years. 15 years! This has been going for 15 years. Seriously. And if you have a look here, up until celebrating 15 years of watercolour tv as i'm live on the 24th of august there's an offer running where you can save you can just see it here 500 pound off lifetime membership have a look on the website check it out you might be interested possibly you might be interested we're almost dry in becoming a lifetime member if not it doesn't matter because it's dead easy just have a look under the membership tab you can see it just up there and it's just loitering here i'm highlighting it in blue for you click on the membership, have a look. You get wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, video tutorials on there. You get access to discounts on art products, these printable worksheets. And here is all the information you want to have a look about Watercolor TV. It's video on demand. This is your Netflix, this is your Amazon Prime, this is your Disney Plus for Watercolor. There's some free lessons to enjoy as well. Have a look at them. Here's the membership plan. So a monthly plan is a tenner a month, a yearly is 50 quid or up until the end of tomorrow as I'm live here on the 24th of August 23 you can get the lifetime membership yes for £299 for a lifetime normally £799 so that's is a celebration for 15 years so you can access 15 years worth of content by clicking on the lessons tab right there and have a look at all the cool stuff that is on watercolor tv also you might be interested in the upcoming uh, workshop that is happening. There's one every single weekend um, on um, here. It is a live workshop. It's nice and steady. We take your time. There's no rushing, almost dry. It's a very casual, steady way of learning 
watercolours on the virtual watercolour workshops. The upcoming one is right at the top of the screen. So on the top of the website you'll see it's saying the 27th of August. That's the one that's coming up. It's going to be a lovely Smuggler's Inn, an old Smuggler's Inn. Think of those Cornish Inns uh, by the sea with cliffs and, and, and crashing waves. It's only a tenner and you can watch it live or at any time. Can't go wrong. Check it out folks. You have to keep forever. Back to this. I think we're probably dry enough to move on here. Um, so what we'll do next is we'll start to bring in the stream and the water. So we're going to use a size 10 brush this time and we're going to wet the water because you can't beat wet water, let's face it. We're going to wet it up to that edge. And I'm just going to lay down some basic colours now. This will progress, it'll improve as we go through, so do kind of stay with us, back to this. Uh, first thing I want to do is get some yellow in, um, it's kind of going in reverse order, so we've got the nice bright yellow coming in here. And we're going to add in horizontal sweeps, yellow. Not so much where the waterfall is, but a little bit of yellow is, is just creeping in there, clean brush. Uh, we're going to take some of the blue that we used as well, so the same blue as we've just been using, bring that in, again horizontal with your blue. So it's kind of reflecting the sky a little bit. We can start to drag a little bit over the top of the waterfall as well, not to concern just yet about that, but a little bit coming over the top of the waterfall would be quite nice and obviously where the blue meets the yellow it goes green that's a good thing for this just a hint of colour is all I'm interested in at this particular stage get some blue coming over so a little bit of movement already let the colours mix don't be afraid of letting the colours mix here so we've started to creep a little bit of that in back to the palette we've got the greens here so we'll go for the light green natural green light just going to give it a bit of a tap on tissue before I do this. We'll get a bit closer into that actually so you can see it better. And over here we want some green to reflect this background. So the green needs to go in. And of course when it mixes with the blue it's going to go darker. So you're starting to get that nice reflect, reflective effect. Even in this corner here with the green I think it would be a good idea. Now in the palette we've got this kind of mishmash of dark greys and greens together so we'll pinch a bit of that, sneak it in there on the tissue and just want to make sure we've got a little bit of darkness coming through there. Even across the top of the waterfall and get some of that darkness in this bottom corner here as well. So, that, so the waterfall will have a good chance and you can see what I've done is I've I've sort of separated it off, so I've separated the top flat to the drop to the foreground, okay, makes perfect sense to do that. Working here very very soon, still not quite ready to do that, so what I'm going to do is take a scrap piece of paper here, this is a sample sheet of Saunders Waterford, I'm going to use that and pop this right on the edge here and use that as a mask, so over on the palette I want to be using so we've gone from the large tree brush into probably the most common of all of them which would be the medium size we've got this lovely dark color here it's natural gray uh, with the green that'll be nice uh, what i want to do here so a lovely dark color here really deep color give it a bit of a stipple taking this edge piece of paper here and I want to separate off this background so I want to pop that just there and we'll do this in shifts so we'll stipple over the top of the tree because I want the tree to look as though it's within you know I want it to be pushed back and shadows are a great way of doing that so we'll blend this in in a second so I'll bring that right down you can see what I'm doing I'm making a, a dark edge to create some depth We'll pop this across the water as well. So it needs to go across the water. So you can see how the brush is all nice and spiky. 
Like I say, all that needs to blend into the background, which we'll be doing very soon. Okay, so we've created that. Jump to this side, pop it on here and just kind of rinse and repeat really. It's going to create some lovely depth effects. You can also cover up any rips that, you know, should possibly have happened when you took your tape off. Clean the edges up, but also makes the edges darker. I don't know whether you can see that, but I've tried to make it go thinner as it goes down towards the middle there. So it's really leading you into the scene. I just want to continue that a touch more down there. Perfect. Clean the brush really well. Um, and then I want a light green basically, but not strong. So more diluted here. Still all nice and spiky. For the brush you can see that there, a nice spiky brush, stickly brush. And then I'm going to work on the tops of those green areas to sort of blend it all in, make it disappear. It, it also helps to push the trees into the picture as well. The bit in the middle here we need to also blend that in as well. So it becomes part of the mist. We've got a strange blob in the water there. Off the back of the tape, uh, the card I believe. So again, really tap, tap, tap away here. Perfect. One thing that you don't want is a, you know, a definite hard edge here. It wants to all look as though it's all in the, all in the mist. And watercolor is really easy to blend in. You see, if you're just with a bit of water or a, a lighter color. I've got one of my lift out brushes here, which is a, a brush designed for lifting out. Nice and clean just to wash away that problem we've got. Get rid of that. There we go. Perfect. And at this stage, just going to grab a size six brush in that same strong color, that same gray, even a bit of this real dark gray here, because I just want to make sure that I've got a real definite sharp edge coming in. Just the job. So that that is really, really dark stuff going off down there. Beautiful, strong, heavy colours. Nice. We can add more work to that later on, should we need to. Nice, looking good. So back down to the foreground. Back down to the foreground here, and we're going to work in this sort of land area, this kind of earth area. It's going to come in. Um, kind of want that to dry a little bit. Let's just have a little chat, folks, while that dries off a second. Here I am. So. You know I'm doing a workshop on Sunday. It's a virtual one. Now these have been running for 151 sessions, okay? Three and a half years. You pay a one-off fee. This is yours to keep. You keep it forever. And what happens basically is you watch it whenever you like. It's yours to keep forever, which is great. But how does that work? How do the workshops work? You get sent an email to you direct, which you can uh, simply just watch again and again. It also appears under your account. So once you've actually got the old uh, booking in place, what happens really easily is once you've logged in, now I'm not logged into this screen, but once you log in, a menu appears called Purchase Workshops and they're all there. 
But we've done 151 of these. Now, if you click on this link above my head, the one that is highlighted in blue, just up there, and go down to this one that says previous live virtual watercolor workshops, have a look at all the 150 that we've done. 151, actually. The recent one we did was this lavender and this bumblebee. And some really popular ones from recent times have been the Spitfire. Look at that. That was a great one to do. You can go back and purchase these. You can go back and purchase them and they're yours to keep forever. Great way to do it. Some lovely ones. Three and a half years worth of content. Um, and as Gail says, the picture that we're doing on this Sunday is kind of like your Jamaica Inn sort of style. Your Cornish kind of smuggler's cove. This one was a special one. This is a British lifeboat and this one has raised well over £200 for the the Royal National Lifeboat Institution. So thank you to everyone that, that actually booked onto this lifeboat workshop. £200 has been donated to them. Um, so thank you for that because it is run by a team of volunteers. So there's some corkers out there to have a look through. Have a look. But I think we're probably just about ready to move on here, folks. And if I just quickly show you this, this is the upcoming one. It's only the 27th of August, 2023, painting all smugglers in, like you say, Jamaica in, that kind of vibe, by the sea in watercolours with dramatic cliffs, rocks and crashing waves. It's going to be an absolute belt of a workshop, so do get yourself booked in if you've not already. Yours to keep forever. It is. Back to this. I think we're dry enough to move on. We're going to paint in this little bit of land here now. Size 10 brush is probably going to be the one I want to use for this. Working on dry paper um, and starting off with quite strong colours here. So we're going to use grey. Stay with me while I do this. We'll do one side at a time. One side at a time. Okay. Um, but we shall start off with grey. Because that's just a good colour. Um, it's a base colour for all this kind of work. So we'll get some grey in, not a huge amount of grey, but enough grey to uh, give us some shadows. So this is natural grey, by the way, is the colour I'm using here. So we'll get all that in, like so. So it's quite patchy. You can do anything you want there. It doesn't really matter what you put there, not a problem. And then we are going to use uh, this colour, which is actually, it's part of the skin tone range. There's a light and dark skin tone available. Um, this one being the darker one, I'm going to use that colour and we're going to, we're going to let that mix with the uh, the grey to make this rocky, earthy kind of colour. We'll be adding some green here, don't worry. You can smell the fear. Bring it in. A bit of Old Spice that you can smell. A bit of Old Spice. A bit of Brute. It's a bit of Brute you can smell. Mix the two together, you get all brute. We're going to have the uh, natural green, light, next. You're making a bloody mess, Palmer. What are you, what are you doing? You've ruined it. Thumbs down. You've ruined it. Put it in the comments. You've ruined it. Bring it in. Bring it in. Trust me, I'm an artist. I'm having palpitations here. <laughs> and bring it across. You've ruined it. What are you doing? Get, get your colours mixing together. Bloody, bloody rubbish this. Wasted my time. Bring it in. Bit of water on the brush just to go right to the top. So you get that lightness at the top there. Beautiful. So you get that lovely depth. Well that looks a pile of... And we're going to use this here again. To add some texture. You, you know it's coming. You know it's coming. And the great thing is about this effect, some colours will stain better than others. So this rocky grassy area, beautiful. This is one to practice. <clears throat> Remember this is the demo. It's like a little sort of free tutorial that we're doing here. The workshops aren't at this pace. They are not at this pace. They're steady, they relax, they're chilled out. Most people are drunk on them, basically me. And it's a great way to watch paint dry for a few hours. Look at that. What a difference. You've got the rocks, 
you've got the lightness, you've got the texture. Yeah, Albert's being a bit, it's being a bit gobby, isn't it, Patricia Albert? It was Albert, it's me. <laughs> Albert came out of COVID when I were doing all these demos every week for people. There's a stack on the channel. Do, do have a look back on the channel. You can see all the lockdown here and all sorts on there. It's great fun. That's great, isn't it, that? Look how you've got shape. Let's do that over here as well. Can't go wrong, can you? Yeah, you can't. Now what we've got is you've got your grey. You've got your grey. 50 shades of grey. There's your grey. Rinse and repeat, but I want to turn the board on this side. I'll come over here. It's always good to put the grey. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. He's doing all the Malbert impressions. He's giving me a rusty voice. Well, turn it upside down actually, just for the minute, just to get some clean edges here. There you go. You need shadows. That's what I keep telling Cliff Richard. Marvin, he'd love to come back. He would. I'm sure he would. There you go. That's your grey. Then you've got that skin tone again. Convinced of it. The secret, remember, is to get these colours all mixing together. And capture it all. Having this kind of red tinge really makes a difference. Hello to Darcy. Darcy's got a new scraping tool. Mine's a, from a few years ago, a Walt Disney World uh, hotel key card. Dinner reservations. It's all online now. Darcy's using a National Trust card <clears throat> and it expired. I might use my bus pass or my gym membership card. I need to make use of that some, somehow. Let's just bring this in. It's important that all these colours mix together, you see. So the grey mixes with the... the skin tone and vice versa. I've just got a bit of water on the brush here just to add a bit more of a blend towards the top. Get all these colours mixing in. Beautiful. And at the same time as using this, you see, what's also happening is I'm reactivating the colour. I suppose it's quite good because it's showing you a bit of a before and after, isn't it? So it's kind of, this is, you know, before and obviously after on that side. If we just tuned in, yes, we are painting the dog's dinner. I'm going to stick a bit of grey in this. Wang a bit of grey in there, because that helps. Beautiful. Nice. And then we'll get the card again. Tried and tested. Tried and tested. I just love the effect. It's such a nice one. You put pressure on the corner. Never works for me. Watercolour TV members, we've just put a lesson on called the weekly watercolour workout. And it'll show you how to do this in detail. Because you get exclusive video on demand content. Beautiful. which you can access as long as you've got a valid membership. But do take advantage of the membership. Enjoy. Look at that. We've got a, a sort of meadow thing happening. Patricia's enjoying watching paint dry, um, which is good to know. There we are. Love that. It reminds me of the Lake District, a place called Ashness, and I've been to Ashness, it's a lovely kind of area of 
flowing waterfalls and rocks and things because that's kind of what you've got that rocky thing going off to it a bit of a rocky area what i'm going to do now is use the number six brush this is part of the super point range this one being the small one you can see why it's called super point because they've got a super point on them different sizes um in uh, super point which works really well <clears throat> and i want to work on the water a little bit now so over to the palette we've got the gray here natural gray and uh, we're going to use this in the water to make some reflections we're kind of bridging the gap between the land and the water a little bit and also starting to think a little bit about the reflection of the waterfall at this point as well so horizontal lines coming through working out from the water's edge keep those lines nice and horizontal here folks won't you i'm flicking them in one direction like so I'm making sure that I don't go over the edge of the waterfall, but can you see it's starting to connect it together? Really nice in this bottom corner here. Similar idea. Because we've got the waterfall that's crashing down, we could actually get a hint of reflection of that, to be honest. So I don't know whether you can see that, but can you see that I'm starting to leave a light area there? So it all gets a bit misty down here. That same strong natural grey, and the colour I'm using, by the way, is this one. So for those people that aren't sure, that's the colour, Matthew Palmer Natural Grey. It's a lovely ready-made shadow colour. And I want to add a few shadows to the rocky areas. Yeah, but where's your light coming from? Let's get some shadows coming down here sort of weaving in between some of these rocks. Imagine these are the tree shadows and little branch shadows just kind of coming through here. So I'm not using a, a strong grey necessarily, but we do need to have some grey in there, some, some kind. And you can spend as much time as you like adding shadows and various things. And uh, even get a little bit more in the background. It depends how far you want to go. I can keep painting this for another five hours, but I'm not going to do that. Because for one, it'll just be me on my own painting. And secondly, it's not enjoyable. This is a quick working from imagination painting. I like to do this kind of thing from time to time. And they are really nice things to do. Which is what I'm planning on doing here, really. So adding a few cast shadows, sprinkling over the top. It is really nice, really good thing to do. Just gives it a bit more of a shadowy feel to it. Following the the shapes of the rocks and there's gonna be all sorts of shadows around here, think about it. There's gonna be shadows in between the stones. Shadows in the trees, shadows in the rocks. It's all good, yeah? That's as good. Okay, okay. Um, we use the tree and texture brush for doing trees, <clears throat> but we can also use the medium one, nice and clean, for the waterfall, actually. Get a bit of movement in your water. We'll start with the blue. They pull it and squash it. We can do that in slow motion because we are on YouTube live streaming. That's the normal speed, slow motion. And back to normal speed again. That's the future of teaching right there. You don't get that on any other channel. That's worth a super chat donation. Come on, come on. Right, anyway, back to this. Got some kitchen paper here. 
give it a tap. Got a little flicks. Can you see that nice spiky brush? Come on, camera. You know you want to focus on it. Look at that. What we're going to do here is add some little bits of movement into the water. We're going to get some shadows and things into this as well. And then we'll put some little horizontal lines going back with the same brush into the water. So little flicks work best, as the actress said to them. And we'll bring it over. We'll also drop in a few little bits of kind of blobs around. Like that. Just so you get that bit of, you know, that sort of broth spray kind of thing going off here. We'll work all this in in a minute. Pull that, pull that brush away. Look at your size 6 brush on your tissue. It was just a bit of water. And then we'll give that a bit of a scribble. Across the top as well. More shadows to come. And smell it, the fear. Bring it in. I'm just using water here. This is Derbyshire water, this. Good water. Should probably add a few little ripples around as well. And if you really want to live life dangerously, stick your finger out. Do a bit of this. It's giving that sort of frothy feel into the water there. Lots of random movements, the brush. And that's blue, so I shall add some grey to this as we start to get to those final bits. But that's looking quite nice, isn't it, that? I hope you're enjoying this one. Gail's picked up some of the brushes. Thank you very much. Um, you're waiting for the postman to get them. Have a play. Watch these back. Watch the stuff back on Watercolor TV. Loads of content on this channel, so do make sure you subscribe. And pop on the notification bell. That's natural grey I'm using now. Um, again, we're going to go and add some some grey lines on that edge. Beautiful. I'm looking forward to getting some light in this, by the way, because that's going to make a difference there. Got some little spots of grey. Grey little bits of ripples and various things around. And it's a bit damp at the minute picture that is and we'll give that a moment to dry while it is drying off I'm going to go darker with the grey I'm actually going to do a colour here that's grey with some of that dark that we used in the land there we go because I just want to spend a moment just adding a few shadows so is anybody in the live chat here today actually going to be actually taking part in the, the Sunday's workshop, the Smugglers In one. I'd love to know if you are, let me know in the comments or the live chat for those that are using it. It's always good to know. We tend to get about a third of the people that actually book on those workshops actually do them live because remember you can do them at any time. They're not, you don't have to do them at the point of Sunday at 10 a.m. UK time and people from around the world like Betsy you're doing it Betsy aren't you now Betsy you're from the States am I right in saying that I apologize I'm wrong um you're from Canada or the States or somewhere like that aren't you I believe I might be wrong in saying that correct me if I'm wrong like Tipex I just know the guy that invented Tipex correct me if I'm wrong I remember going to Harrogate one year with the ex-wife <laughs> and yeah I know I went to Harrogate one year and um, this is not a true story actually it is um, I went to Harrogate one year and there was a there were signs all over for the Harrogate conference centre saying Tipex conference I'm thinking is Tipex really that popular that they have to have a conference about it and it turns out it was this it was a make of lorry like a tipping lorry 
That's genuine. I'm thinking all these all these people that were sniffing Tipex correction fluid. It's nice to spend a bit of a moment putting some shadows. I'm giving layers to the rocks. Now listen, we've got some more super thanks to uh, mention. So a big shout out, a huge shout out to Patricia Warner. Patricia, thank you for your kind super chat donation of three, three pounds. Wonderful, very much appreciated. It really does help to keep the lights on here in the studio. Thank you so much. And also the first we are celebrating with the first super chat from Amanda Wegram. You've got a little number one next to you. So thank you, Amanda Wegram, for that five pound uh, super chat donation there. It really does make a difference to the channel. Thank you so much. You can make a difference by just subscribing and hitting the like button to the video because that helps to get the channel noticed. I've been a wee bit lazy on YouTube recently, I'll be honest with you. So I'm here, I'm back. And if you've enjoyed this, we'll do another one in a couple of weeks time but there's a lot of content for you guys to enjoy if you've not already had a look back at the back catalogue I'm dropping some downward lines here in the water to create some depth can you see the depth I'm adding? little flicks, little flicks little flicks so Peter is it your birthday today? is it? Peter Loss? is it your birthday? If it is, we're celebrating, aren't we? Happy birthday to you if it is. It's gone off the top of the screen, so I'm not quite sure if it is or isn't, but I think it, from what you were saying, I think it probably is. Brilliant. So a few little extra shadows here and there. It's quite addictive, this. I'm, I'm sort of working within the areas that I've already painted. I want to make sure that I'm quite dark at the back of the water here. You know where it comes down, just where it sort of sneaks over. Brilliant. Let's get a bit more shadow coming in here. It's nice. Good stuff. Now I just want to add a few little horizontal lines in the water ready for some light which we'll get to while we finish. I, I feel that we could have a few more rocks and things around in this. Looking nice on that one. Let's just take some grey, some relatively pale grey here and do some little bits in the water. Oh it's tomorrow Peter, well have a great birthday tomorrow at Peter last won't you. Enjoy your day whatever you're doing. Friday's a good day for a birthday because you can get drunk. It's Friday, it's weekend, you're allowed to, aren't you? Every day is Friday. <laughs> Bring it in. I'm not encouraging drinking, by the way. Someone said to me, why don't you do a drunken painting workshop where you have wine included? Would anybody take part in a drunken painting workshop? Then you sort of look at the results in the morning. Do you know what I mean? But hopefully you can see I've added some grey to this, which has broken up that harshness quite nicely. Then again, that little bit of splatter just around in the foreground is always good. We can put some of that over the rocks as well, to be fair. Just give it a bit of texture. Yeah, all, all, of, them, all, of, them, all of them are keyboard, yeah. I splattered my screen with white. There we are. Beautiful. I like that little bit of a splatterage thing. It really works well. Let's look back at the picture. Not looking bad, is it, for a quickie? Quite pleased with that. A few little bits I want to add, a few little sort of slightly darker, almost trees, almost branches. What I've got here, folks, is a branching detail brush. We'll get the camera to focus on that for you. 
There we go, a small one. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful tool. What we're going to use here is... Natural grey. And some of that dark tone again. And then we're going to wipe it on the old tissue. And just add a few branches in the trees here with this brush. Not massively detailed though, just incidentals. Can you see the incidentals? Because they're important, aren't they? Like background music. You see them, they're all sort of distant trees. It helps to cause that recession effect here. I mean, they're about that. Bring it in. Just a few little, little twigs, little branches. <clears throat> Just subtle with a silent B which is same as swimming with a silent P. Bring them in. They're there, but they're not shouting at you, are they? Do you know what I mean? And they really do help, I think, in a picture like this to help to sort of lead you down the garden path, literally. Take you towards the center. I had no idea, literally, I had no idea what I was painting until I started. Yeah, we can tell. Um, and it's part of the fun. I wouldn't do these if I didn't work like that. That's the way I like to work. But look how that's created that little bit of depth. And if you have got a tree, you can always just reflect it a touch in the water, I suppose, as well. But that's looking really good, happy with what we've got so far. Now, I think it's time to put some light in the picture. So we'll pop that there. That there, so put it there. And what we're going to do is a couple of things. We've got a craft knife here, and also we've got a scrap piece of paper. And we're going to drop some Matthew Palmer white onto this. There it is. Stick a bit of white on it. Where's it going? Where's it going? What we're going to do with the craft knife is and so look at that. Look like I've been on a. Look, look, look like I've been plastering the wall. I said something else then. We're going to go in and scratch in the water. Isn't that a good effect? Really nice effect. Bring it into your water. Bring it over your waterfall. Break the edge. You see it makes it look a bit more random, a bit more sparkly. Like there, it's a very clean edge at the minute. But if we scrape it a little bit. Add a few horizontals around here. really works don't it it just makes it look a little bit more sparkly adds texture adds a lovely bit of texture adds a lovely bit of texture to it nice the white paint i want to use with a size six and we're going to take a bit of that mix it into the brush like so just remove some excess on the tissue and we can use this just to give a little bit of spit and polish what? a little bit of spit and polish to your picture so just a little bit of little bits of water that's just creeping over the edge of the rocks you can see little rivulets rivulets that's it that's the word I was trying to think of where it's just coming down and just adding a bit of spit and polish and you can sort of take it over the top of the waterfall can you see it smooths it out a little bit beautiful this is matthew palmer white um it's liquid white so it doesn't want very much 
uh, water with it you can use it pretty much and it's ridiculously opaque which is what you want of course it took a long time to get this white to market so do enjoy it it's lovely stuff and for those people that do use it I hope you do enjoy it because it's such a nice one to uh, to use but I love them little bits of water just kind of coming over the waterfall there and of course there's no reason why I couldn't add little little light bits in your water as long as they're horizontal it'll work absolutely fine and uh, just that little bit of highlighting just helps the water have, have more of a surface to it little bits in the foreground here look because obviously the water is going to be very active here so having little bits of horizontal lines you get that nice little puddle effect there you go there's little little bits creeping over here would really make a difference to them it takes the harsh edge off the waterfall And gives you a lovely little curve and that nice that little curve that comes over the edge it just makes it look more natural perfect happy with that over here i think it wants a bit of this these horizontal lines just coming in just sneaking at the back there just to tell people that that is the surface of the water it's catching the light from the sky and it goes quite a long way to add in detail you know little white flowers or something around the corner of the picture here would be quite nice little white dots possibly maybe a few over this side as well now if i do dilute the water that um the white down quite a bit we can get like a milky translucent effect and I think the thing I feel I want to add to this and you know it's coming so I want to do it anyway to give scale is a bit of a metal style uh, gateway or something like that and that will dry a little bit lighter because I've diluted it you see and it will help to give a bit of scale to the picture like a white gate or something but kind of in the distance not too precise a little bit of a sort of railing thing going off there and that just helps to give a bit of scale to the picture I think because I'm using the diluted white, as in I've got water with it, there's no reason why I can add a few highlights into the into this area as well, just to brighten things up a touch. But can you see, even diluted, this white is lovely. So you've got light coming through there, which is beautiful. Let's come back with the camera. That's the wrong way, palm. And let's add a bit of that very diluted white over here as well. Just to give some light streaming through. The trees it brightens it up a lot and it's created a lovely little watercolor it really has from the close-up of the flowing water right there zooming back to the, the rocks that were scraped out with a Disneyland key card from 2010 or something to the white in the branches to this craft knife to the scratching it's all there and it's made a lovely watercolour picture. Now what I want to do is get mounted. What? Put the frame on. There we go. Beautiful. Isn't that good? Well, I think it is. I've enjoyed it, folks. I've enjoyed doing it. It's been a while since, I, since I've done a YouTube thing. Um, so I hope you have enjoyed it too. Show your support by subscribing. And uh, obviously, make sure you uh, pop your comments in the comments box below. And... There we go. So 
if you have a go yourself do make sure you pop it on Facebook Matthew Palmer's watercolor group free to join on Facebook Matthew Palmer's watercolor group it's a great place to keep the paint flowing and uh, the lifeboat's still there as well and um, also a great place to keep the paint flowing of course is those upcoming live workshops and don't forget at the top of the screen top of the website that's where you go to where the upcoming one is it's currently the 27th of august check it out it's a tenner watercolor tv members get 10 percent off there's the information painting old smugglers in by the same watercolors that's gonna be fun isn't it so i'll see you then have a look if you're watching this in the future do let me know what the future is like in the comments i'd love to know but thank you for taking time out it's been a pleasure and i'll see you soon let's have one last look at this don't forget to book this workshop look at this